In this video, you'll learn how to install Node.js and the NPM Package Manager on Windows 11. Let's open a command prompt and check to see if we have a previous version installed first. From the command window, let's run npm-v, not there, and let's try node-v, nope, not there either. All right, let's get busy. We'll open up Google and search for download node.js. We'll take the first link that says download. On the download page, there are lots of options. We can install LTS or the long-term support versions or a current version. LTS will have better support and fewer possible bugs, so we'll select that. We're on a Windows 11 machine. Let's select the MSI or Microsoft installer file. And unless you're running on older hardware, let's get the 64-bit version. While that's downloading, let's scroll down a bit. We want to get the SHA sum value for the file so we can check to make sure it hasn't been tampered with. It's the authentic file and it wasn't corrupted during the download. Let's click the SHA sum link. Wow, that's a lot of numbers. The most important thing to notice is these values are SHA-256 checksums. So that's what we'll compute locally for comparison. Our download just finished. Let's go to the downloads directory. There's the file we just downloaded, node18.18x64.msi. Let's go ahead and compute the hash of that file here. We'll type in certutil dash hash file, the name of the MSI file, space SHA-256, and press enter. There's our checksum. Now let's go look up the value on the site to compare it to. Let's look down through the list and find the file that matches the name of the package we just downloaded. And there it is. Let's copy that checksum value and then paste it into our command window. And let's do a compare. I typically check the first few characters, the last few characters, and look for a pattern in the middle that matches. These all look good. So the file is good, and we can get started with the installation. Let's enter the MSI package name and press enter. On the splash screen, let's click next. We can scroll through the license file and see all the things we're about to agree to. Check the box and click next. Here you can change the default installation location. I'm fine with where it's at, so let's click next. And I won't make any changes to customize the setup. So let's click next again. Now you have a decision to make. NPM wants to install some modules that require compilation with C or C++. This will require some Python and Visual Studio workloads to be installed on your machine. It also wants to install Chocolaty, which is a package management system designed for Windows. Think of it like Homebrew for Mac OS or Apt and Yum for Linux. I'll check the box and let it install what it needs. And then I'll click Next. And then finally, Install. You might get stopped at this point if you don't have install privileges on your machine. For those who can continue, we see the Node.js package comes from the OpenJS Foundation. We can see more details about the installation, and we can even check the publisher's certificate. It all looks good, so let's click OK, and then Yes. And the installation's done, so Node.js is done. Let's click Finish and we get another pop-up window. Now we need to install the additional native packages to finish up. If you want to stop right now, you can X out of this window or press any key to keep going. Let's keep going. And press any key. Once again, we'll need rights to install this package. We can click show more details to see what's going on. We can see Chocolaty, Python, Visual Studio 2019 workloads will be installed. This all looks fine, so let's click Yes. I'll warn you this process is very slow, but it did complete for me successfully the first time. As a bonus, when this installation is over, we'll test everything out by creating and running a JavaScript application that hits an endpoint and pulls back some JSON data. While the project loads, please consider clicking the subscribe and like button to help the channel grow. Thank you. I'll fast forward through a lot of this installation. 
you may see an occasional stack trace or exception when you're doing the install. Like I mentioned, it worked fine for me, but should it fail, I'd suggest running the MSI package once again. At the end, you'll see a summary of what was done. In my case, 19 of 19 packages were installed, including Chocolatey, a lot of patches, Python, and some Visual Studio 2019 tools. Let's press Enter to exit, and poof, it's gone. OK, now let's bring up the command window again and see what we've done. When we run node-v, I have version 18.18. .18. You may have something different, and that's OK. And when I run npm-version, I have version 9.8.1. Again, you might have something different and even newer. OK, now it's time for a bonus. Let's open up a command window. I'm in a directory called JS. Let's run dir and we see there's nothing there. We're going to build a JavaScript application that will hit an endpoint. We'll use a package called superagent to make the get call. Let's use npm, the package manager, to install it by running npm install superagent. That downloads the superagent library, adds it to node modules for our local project, and adds it to our package.json manifest. It creates a package lock .json file that will make our process repeatable. Now let's write our app. We'll use VS Code to do that. Let's enter code fetch-it.js and that will bring up VS Code. Our code will be really brief. First, we'll import the superagent library into our code. We'll use it to make our HTTP GET request. Next, let's make a call to GET. The endpoint will be JSON placeholder type i code dot com slash posts. This endpoint will return posts on the site as JSON objects. Dot then is a promise based handler that executes when the HTTP request is successful. The response object will contain the data returned from the API call. Next, we'll extract the body of the response and store it in a list of posts. Then we'll print the title of the first post to the console. And finally, if there's any error with the HTTP request, we'll log the message to the console. Let's save that code, and then go back to the console and run the code with node fetchit.js, and we get the title of the first post entry. It's kind of a lorem ipsum thing, so it's not really readable. Really, it looks like Latin. We can also run our application from within VS Code. If we go back there, and select Run Without Debugging, we can run the code within VS Code. We need to trust our workspace. This is to ensure malicious code isn't executed without our knowledge. And down in the debug console, we get the same output. So our install of Node.js and NPM is working, and we're all set up to write some awesome applications. That's it for this time. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with others. Thanks for watching, and remember to always begin secure.